Welcome back to another video. This one is sponsored by you mother fish guys and don't forget to like so I can put fish food on the table for my family. Today is going to be an update and prep for this weekend. Now, what's this weekend? Another frag swap. We're getting the reef tank parameters straightened out, setting up a 20 gallon quarantine tank for whatever we buy this weekend. And at the end of the video, we'll do a comment shout out from my last video. Let's go. So I ordered some better test kits, a few, like most of them. I actually thought I had a pretty good idea of what the tests were gonna show, and I was wrong. Before I tell you, keep in mind that I don't currently dose anything. I just recently ran out of instant ocean salt. Not the reef kind, just the regular instant ocean. And I got a bucket of this new salt from someone on Facebook. So I can't imagine that just the few cups I've put in since I started using this new salt has anything to do with these parameters. And also, I'm pretty sure most of this rock is natural rock. Like, it's not the, uh, whatever it's called. It's not the stuff that's like man-made. So the rock, I wouldn't think would be leaching any minerals. The sand, I mean, I've had the sand forever. So this tank is about three years old in its current state and like the rocks and sand. So basically this tank's been up and established for about six years. Anyway, calcium is around 550. Alkalinity is low. It's around 6.1. And magnesium I found is 1590. So I was testing for these parameters and using the Salifert test kits, and these are titration kits. So you add this last liquid, and once you reach the point that these liquids change colors, however much liquid you have left over corresponds to a number on a chart, and that tells you your levels for that particular test. So for calcium, I went through the whole one milliliter, and it still hadn't changed colors. And I, I really assumed that it was going to be fairly early on that the color would change because I thought there would be, you know, pretty low calcium. I'm not using a reef salt. I thought there would be average or under average amounts of calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity. And the only thing that was under was alkalinity. So I went ahead and ordered BRS's two-part dosing kit, but it's not supposed to be here for like another four or five days. The stuff usually comes early but let's say three or four days, that's not supposed to be here. And going into the weekend, I really wanna have this tank on the right track to get it to a proper alkalinity level. And aside from doing water changes, I can't think of a way to bring down calcium and magnesium, which I hear it's not even that big a deal to have them that high. So other than having more corals, water changes is the only other option. I am gonna do a water change when I set up the quarantine tank, we're gonna put 20 gallons from this tank into the quarantine tank and then do a water change, obviously, to replenish the 20 gallons. That will be a small percentage down closer to the correct calcium levels, magnesium levels. If the salt that I'm mixing has correct levels in it, we'll see, I guess, when we get to that point. But basically, yeah, that means I need more corals, right? To bring the calcium and magnesium down. Gotta fix alkalinity, which we're doing in this video. We're making DIY alkalinity one part. We're making DIY two part, just the alkalinity portion, because that's what I need for this tank. And in the description, I'm going to link the recipe that I found on Reef to Reef by Randy Holmes Farley. This is like excellent if you need a recipe for making your own two-part. There's different ways to do it, different mixing methods. He basically goes through the whole process, extremely detailed, gives you dosing suggestions. So the way we're going to fix this alkalinity issue is basically creating the alkalinity portion of two-part by taking baking soda, baking it, which results in soda ash. The soda ash will raise your pH, which I also need my pH raised. Unbaked baking soda will lower your pH. So we're gonna take this recipe and I'm gonna make a quarter batch because I have the stuff from BRS coming soon. I don't need to make that much. So I'm gonna take the numbers outlined in the recipe and basically divide it by four. So what I'm gonna do is raise the DKH of this water by 0.5 per day. And if I am adding the dosage to get it up to 0.5 and it's not doing anything, I'll go up a little higher. So over the span of six days, that will raise it up to 8.5 dKH. I'll be testing the water each day to make sure everything's going smoothly. And then we'll be constantly monitoring everything else as these corals hopefully start to settle in and feel more comfortable, feel less stressed as we dial in the water parameters to the proper levels. Right now, we're gonna go whip up that recipe. We're gonna start by measuring out baking soda. This is just everyday household baking soda. For the full one gallon recipe, we'd be using 594 grams 
we're gonna be using 148.5 or at least as close to 148 grams as possible. Once we have that baking soda, we're going to transfer it onto a baking tray, a baking sheet. I've got this glass Pyrex pan I'll be using. And now we're gonna take that baking soda to the oven and bake it at 300 degrees for one hour. One hour later. Once that's done, we can set it aside to cool. And then I'm gonna measure out my water. One gallon is equal to 3,785.412 milliliters. That number divided by four is 946.353, or as close to that number as we can get it. We're going to combine all three of these measurements for 946.353 milliliters. And from there, slowly dissolve our soda ash into the water. It helps if you stir while you're pouring it in so it doesn't cake up in the bottom like it is here. You'll have all these chunks at the bottom you'll have to break up. It's a little difficult to get it completely dissolved. However, we can warm the water a little to help it dissolve better. And once we've got it completely dissolved or as best we can, I'm gonna measure out this amount per day using this chart and I'm gonna dose this into the sump in a high flow area to help it dissolve. The next day. So the next day I take my next measurement of alkalinity and to my surprise, it is the same as the first measurement. So we're gonna go ahead and set up the quarantine tank. I chose to paint the bottom black, because I like black. It could make it easier to see any pests on the bottom of the tank. With a heater, little hang in the back filter, a top to keep evaporation down, and a little light, and a power head, and we're gonna fill it with 20 gallons from our water change. What's interesting is after the water change, I took another measurement of my alkalinity, which I expected to be roughly the same, and it was up to 7.1 from 6.1. And then I'll make an additional dose tomorrow of our DIY alkalinity and see if we can get it up to 7.5. The only other thing I need to do in this tank is get the flow right. I used to have about three power heads and a return from the sump in this tank. So that was decent for a while and I didn't even have any corals in here. The double power head ended up sending some current into the water that I felt one day. So I took that out. We're down to one sump return and one power head on the other side. For a 125, six foot tank, that's certainly not enough for hard corals. So we need to bump that flow up. The only other power head I can really put in here is a pretty small one. And I think I'm gonna use that for the coral quarantine tank that we're gonna be setting up. I'll have to get a power head in the next few days to a week. We'll be looking at some budget options for power heads. Either way, we'll get something, I'll show you. We'll test it out and we'll review it. Until we get the new power head, I will be cleaning this current one because it's caked in spirobid worms. And I know that's gonna be reducing the output. So we definitely need to get that cleaned and that'll at least do something to increase the flow. I think we're pretty much ready for this weekend, guys. This frag swap in Cleveland is gonna be so cool. We're gonna make a full video out of it. I'll get it out to you guys as quick as possible. The frag swap's on Saturday, and I hope to get it out to you guys on Monday. And now we're gonna read some comments from my last video. CJ's Aquariums suggested raising the LED lights. I had them like pretty low, around like seven inches, maybe less. And he suggested 15 to 17 inches. So I did raise them to about 10 inches. It seems like visually more than 10 inches, but that pretty much fixed the spread issue. I don't think I need to adjust the lights now, in or out. The spread is pretty much perfect. 
So that's pretty sick. The only thing I need to do now, I think, is put either a canopy up or some kind of light shade. Because when you're sitting in here, the light that's coming down, pretty, uh, you know, it's on the floor, it's in your eyes. So we'll do something to fix that. CJ's Aquariums actually has a video where he made a DIY cover, not specifically for these kinds of lights, but a light that would hang off the back of your tank. So it would sort of cover the top. Check out that video if you're interested. A few people commented on the fact that I dipped the anemone. In all fairness, the bottle says it's safe for anemones, but after doing more research, you totally don't need to dip anemones. Some dips are actually harmful for them. And there's not many pests that live inside anemones. The only real thing you're gonna deal with is the fact that anemones hold on to a lot of water. And so they could be holding on to the free swimming stages of ick, velvet, other pests in their like free swimming stage. So about 48 hours in a quarantine setup should allow them to expel any pests inside them in the water that's within them. And especially if certain dips are bad for them, I wouldn't dip in an enemy again. But it's doing really good. It's doing fantastic. It's very bubbly. It's very colorful. It looks happy. Its mouth is closed. It's not gaping open. It doesn't seem stressed. So we're good. Jake Brabeck commented on me getting my corals before my lights. How do I show them that I love them if they already have new lights when they come here? I have to show them the upgrades that they're getting to, for them to know that I love them. Fuego Bunny. You may need some more phosphate. My frog spawn was really pale for a few months and then I started dosing some phosphate and the color came back within a few days. My phosphate's around 0.1 to 0.25, but that's not low, it's not zero. It's pretty high, so I think we're good on phosphate. Miser87, some of his ideas for corals, uh, some of his favorites are Leptocerus, Branching Cyphastria, Fungia Plate, Candy Cane Coral, and Galaxia. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll definitely check out some of those corals when I'm at the frag swap. And lastly, Mitch left me one of the longest messages I've gotten. I'm super grateful for you taking the time to write this message out. Extremely detailed, and he's basically saying that lighting is the second most important factor only to flow for stony corals. And then all corals are basically completely different animals and how we care for them. Each one has different care requirements. So you basically need to, you basically need to know exactly what you're doing for each coral you put in your tank and they could need completely different parameters to be happy and thrive. He also pointed out the fact that the SPS corals are looking pretty stressed. That is true, but I am dedicated to fixing the problems in my tank and making sure they survive. But we're doing everything we can for these corals, so I know we'll get there. And I definitely misnamed two of these corals. So Brittany was confident that what I said was the blasto was a mushroom, and she was right. It is an orange redactus mushroom. The Zoa that I said hadn't quite opened up yet was the Blasto. So I don't know how I got those confused and I don't know why I didn't believe her, but I didn't and now it's straight. So thank you, Mitch, for pointing that out. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you on Monday after the frag swap. but do not subscribe because we have way too many people. 500 is like way past my limit. If too many of you press the subscribe button at the same time, this channel might blow up. Do not blow up this channel. I swear. Do not blow up this channel.